اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سید الانبیاء والمرسلین ابی القاسم محمد وعلى آل بیته الطیبین الطاہرین بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم and we desired to bestow a favor upon those who are deemed weak in the land and to make them imams and make them the inheritors. On the birth of the awaited savior, Imam Al-Hujjah, Ajjal Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, we send our congratulations to the Islamic Ummah, the Islamic scholars, and to you, my dear brothers and sisters, asking the Almighty Allah to hasten the reappearance of our awaited Savior. And inshallah, we will be under His service, under His flag in the very near future. Our first guest is a youth who has been speaking at several events. And just like the program organized today by the youth of Rasul Al-A'zam and Shabab Al-Subtain, the London Shia community encourage youth to speak, to write, and to do their best in the service of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum as -salam. In my travels across Europe and America, we do not see this in other communities, but the Shia community in London, Alhamdulillah, with the help of the elders who have established the love of the Ahlul Bayt in our hearts. Sometimes we forget that our parents went through hardship, especially the Iraqis. We went through hardship and they had to leave their homelands to travel here, not for themselves, but for the better livelihood of ourselves, for our education, for better living standards. And Alhamdulillah, we have been blessed to be raised by parents that have taught us the love of the Ahlul Bayt. And a proof of this is Shabab al Subtain. A proof of this is the Shabab from Husayniyat Rasul al Azam. Alhamdulillah, we are blessed to have such youth. We welcome our first guest, Muhammad Adam Ali, with a loud salawat. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الأطيبين الأطهرين I have a very short time to speak to you all today about the following topic of Imam Al-Hujjah on the occasion of his birth. And inshallah, I would like to share with you a few points that have been of interest to me over the past few years. Over the past year and a half, my relationship with Imam Al-Hujjah, Sharif, in whose honor today we have congregated to commemorate him. My relationship with him has changed quite a lot over the past year and a half, and I thought I'd share with you some of the ahadith and riwayat that I've come across, <coughs> which to me have provided a lot of meaning and depth. And I'll start with two ayat from the Holy Quran in Surah Al Saf, which is chapter number 61 of the Holy Quran, verse number 9. And Lil Ilm, this ayah is actually repeated at another instance in the Holy Quran in a completely separate surah, Surah Al Bara'a or Surah Al Tawbah. 
the ninth chapter of the Quran, ayah number 33. And the ayah reads as follows. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda. It is he who has sent his messenger, i.e. the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, bil huda, to guide people with guidance. Wa deen al-haq, and the religion of truth. Li yudhirahu ala al-deen kullih. So that he can manifest the religion of Islam above all religion. Even though the polytheists, the people who ascribe to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala partners might dislike that. And essentially this ayah is saying that there will be a time where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was sent to make Islam the religion which prevails over all other religions. Now as I'm sure most of you know, Islam is not the top religion in the world currently. It's not. I believe it's Christianity and uh, Islam is not the prevailing religion. And for the tafsir of this particular ayah, I've used tafsir al-Burhan, the Sayyid Hashim al-Bahrani. You can find this in the third volume or the seventh volume of tafsir al-Burhan for these particular ayat. An Abi Basir, who's a companion of the Imams, an Abi Abdullah alayhi salam. So this companion asks Imam al-Sadiq. And he says, Essentially, this ayah is saying that Islam is the top religion and it's going to prevail. But that's not the case. So how can this ayah be true? How can you reconcile what the ayah is promising with the reality of the situation? And the imam replies, Wallahi ma nazala ta'wiluha ba'd. I swear by Allah that the reality of this ayah has not yet been manifested. Wala yanziru ta'wiluha. And its reality will not be manifested. Until the Imam al Hujja reappears, the reality of this ayah will not appear in the real world. When al Imam al Hujja reappears, there will not be anyone who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a very interesting phrase. He says, There will be no one who places beside the Imam a partner. We will have one Imam who is the establisher of justice. Um, so these people will hate the fact that the Imam has reappeared. And ultimately, this ayah paints a very clear picture. We have one Lord. We have 124,000 prophets. All of them came to tell us the same thing. There's one God. And if you want to return to that God, you return to him by me. I am the path that he used to communicate with you. And I'm the path that you will use to communicate with him, to submit wholly to him. And in this particular context, it's in this ayah, it's demonstrated that Imam al hujjah is like the final jigsaw piece of this puzzle. He is the Messiah. He is the one we are awaiting to establish a utopian paradise on this earth and to establish peace and justice for all. From a purely humanitarian perspective, the reappearance of Imam al hujjah is something we should earnestly await and hope for. And from a religious perspective, as the Shia of Al Muhammad, we should be waiting earnestly. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa We should be awaiting earnestly for the reappearance of our Imam to establish the power of Al Muhammad. And this is what the concept of Al Raj'ah is about. I would recommend you all to go and read up on Al Raj'ah. I'm not going to go into it at the moment. And so I'd like to just read to you a few ahadith that for me have been very special in terms of understanding the context and the idea of Al Imam Al Hujjah as more than some kind of special mythical fairy tale creature who currently has got nothing to do with us and will come back at the end of time and save us. Was, that's usually the syntax that is adopted when we talk about Al-Imam Al-Mahdi. We consider him to be someone who doesn't really exist. He's not really involved in our lives. We don't really actually have much to do with him. But he'll come back sometime and he'll sort all, everything out. And actually the reality is that a hadith of the Ahlul Bayt there are several ahadith which clearly paint a very different picture to that. And I'd like to give you just some small glimpses into those ahadith. The first is one from Al Imam Zain al Abidin al Sajjad, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, the fourth Imam. And this particular ayah can be found in Kamal al Din wa Tamam al Ni'ma. An Abi Khalid al Kabuli, who was a companion of Imam al Sajjad alayhi salam, an Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin, this is the fourth Imam. So the Imam says to him, Ya Aba Khalid, O oh Abu Khalid, Inna ahla zaman ghaybatihi. The people who exist at the time of the ghaybah of our Imam, and that's us. Inna ahla zaman ghaybatihi. 
القائلين بإمامته the ones who profess his إمامة والمنتظرين لظهوره and the ones who await his reappearance أفضل من أهل كل زمان these people that are being described which hopefully is us are greater than the people of every other time why? لأن الله تبارك وتعالى أعطاهم because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them certain characteristics and traits which are the following من العقول والأفهام والمعرفة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them minds and intellect and understanding to a certain level and that level is this ما صارت به الغيبة عندهم بمنزلة المشاهدة and this is the ayah that I want you all to, to focus upon which really hit deep with me ما صارت الغيبة ما صارت به الغيبة عندهم بمنزلة المشاهدة that these people who hopefully are us have been given a level of insight and intellect into the presence of our Imam that even though he is absent we feel that he is present ما صارت به الغيبة عندهم بمنزلة المشاهدة we consider our Imam or the people that are being described in this particular hadith to be present with us even though he's actually not there the reality of the situation is physically our Imam is not with us we can't go and speak to him or you can't physically go and speak to him but if we were to reach for this kind of level that is described in the hadith then the ghayba, the whole concept of his occultation would completely transform into something else suddenly whenever I'm sad or whenever I'm happy or whenever I'm lonely or whenever I have a problem or whenever I'm ill or whenever I'm sick I speak to my Imam I think of my Imam as though he is sitting before me there's a transformation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us has bestowed upon us this insight that allows us to create a spiritual connection with the Imam in his physical absence and ultimately if we want to reach and aspire for this kind of level of relationship we need to attain ma'rifa ma'rifa being a kind of a, a phrase of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, suggesting some kind of personal relationship with the individual you have a personal knowledge a personal understanding of this person we all know the hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi very widely narrated man mata wa lam ya'rif imam zamanihi mata mitatan jahiliya that the individual who dies and does not know the imam of his time dies a death of ignorance and of course we use this to argue with other schools of Islam and to prove constantly that we're right and etc etc it's a very widely narrated hadith but actually the concept is elaborated by al-imam al-sadiq alayhi salam and this is in kitab al-ghayba the shaykh ibn abi zainab ibn umani and you can find this hadith i'm sure you can go and research it several points that this hadith is repeated and abi abdullah alayhi salam so al-imam al-sadiq alayhi salam قال يا يحيى so he's speaking to one of his companions من بات ليلة لا يعرف فيها إمام زمانه مات ميتة جاهلية that the individual who spends one night sleeps one night without the معرفة of his Imam will also die a death of ignorance and so we have an expansion of the concept of رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله رسول الله is telling you by the time you die you need to know your Imam Imam Sadiq is elaborating and he says, no, every single night when you sleep, you need to know your Imam. Now, what this means is not perhaps literally that I need to know my Imam before I sleep. And every time I want to sleep, I need to think about my Imam and get to know him and then sleep. No, the concept is that there is a continuity of the ma'rifah. You need to attain a ma'rifah of your Imam, which expands and extends over time. And just a few ways that I think would be really useful for us to be able to attain the ma'rifah of our holy imam because of course the ma'rifah of our imam is something that we absolutely need and absolutely require there's a hadith from imam al-askari this is a very nice hadith that ulama often use to justify the concept of taqlid so i remember for example once i went to a hausa class in qum it was just a, a two-week thing nothing long and one of the first questions that gets asked naturally in this setup that we have of marji'i and taqlid is why are you making me qallid you and so this hadith is often used, although in some, some uh, ulama weaken this hadith, to be fair. This hadith is often used to justify why we should follow a scholar. Etc, etc. And you can find the hadith, and I've got the source here. 
Al-Ihtijaj al-Shaykh al-Tabarsi, the second volume, page 263. So I would personally recommend you to go and read this hadith because in the context of Shi'ism and following someone and doing taqlid and maj'iyya and all these kinds of concepts, it's actually quite an important hadith. But the hadith essentially says, if you find a good scholar, you can follow him. That's essentially the concept of the hadith. And the hadith in its wider context is actually speaking about the Jews of Bani Israel. And it says that their key problem was that they followed scholars who were openly sinful. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not forgive them for submitting to these scholars. So, uh, so the Imam is actually talking about bad scholars, evil scholars. And there's actually a section in the hadith where he talks about scholars of the Ahlul Bayt, Shia scholars who he describes as kuffar and mutalabbisin. And you can actually read this. That he describes these scholars as even kuffar. To a certain extent, you're submitting your religious con you know, convictions in the hands of someone else. You have to know what they're saying and know what they preach and know what they believe. There's a very nice section right at the end. So he's talking about good scholars, he's talking about bad scholars. And then he says, لا جرم, No doubt. أن من علم الله من قلبه من هؤلاء القوم from the mainstream Shia, from the layman of the Shia, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew of a purity in his heart, if a person wants nothing but to protect their deen, their religion, and he wants to give might to his master, i.e. Imam al hujja and this is the description of a Shia scholar. The Imam is saying, if God knows that you come with a pure heart and all you want to do is protect your faith and give glory to your master, that's your starting standpoint. Allah will not leave you in the hands of a misguided or a deviant scholar. وَلَكِنَّهُ يُقَيِّضْ لَهُ مُؤْمِنًا Allah will designate for you a believer. يقف به على الصواب. This is a beautiful concept. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you go with a pure heart, will not leave you at the hands of a scholar who may be incorrect. He will actually guide you. He will designate for you an individual to tell you what is right and what is wrong and to usher you onto the right path. And I personally have had an experience with this. I personally believe. And so I would really encourage you all to think about your intentions when you're seeking your imam. Seek your imam with a pure heart and consider him as someone who actually lives and is present in our current time rather than this current kind of fairy tale concoction kind of image that we have of the imam. And I'd like to conclude with one of the key ways that I personally believe is a good way within which we can attain our imam and within which we can attain the ma'rifah like we said, man ba'ta layla la ya'rifu fiha imam zamanihi ma tamita tanjahiliya we need to have a constant ma'rifah of our imam. We need to have a constant understanding and knowledge of who our imam is. You want to follow an imam and fight by him, you need to know who he is and what he stands for. And the personal piece of advice I would give is a ziyara al-jami'ah al-kabira. Ziyara al-jami'ah al-kabira, in Arabic, jami' can mean mosque. And jami' can mean university. Jami'a means a hadith which congregates all the meanings of ziyara and is comprehensive, it's whole. And when I first heard about ziyara al-jama' al-kabira, I thought it meant the ziyara of the big mosque, or not university, I thought it meant the big mosque. Then I realized it actually meant the great comprehensive ziyara. This is a ziyara. The basic story is there was a companion of Imam al-Hadi, the 10th Imam, from whom this Ziyara is narrated. And one of his companions, I believe by the name of Musa ibn Abdullah al Nukha'i, goes to the Imam and says, Alimni, ya ibn Rasulullah, teach me, O the son of Rasulullah, qawlan baligan kamila. Teach me something eloquent and perfect. Teach me something perfect. Aqulu idha zurtu wahidan minkum. Something along those lines. And you can find this in Mafati al Janan. It's available in Mafati al Janan. And when you read the ziyara, essentially what happened to me is I heard about this ziyara a few years ago when I was listening to a lecture. And I thought, okay, cool, this ziyara sounds quite interesting, it sounds comprehensive. Maybe I should check it out. I went on to Shia Voice and I searched a ziyara al-jama' al-kabira and I found something that was 46 minutes long. 
and I got bored. I turned off, I said, I'm not bothered for that. 46 minutes is quite long. And a few years down the line, I started hearing more and more and more about Ziyarat Jam al-Kabir without really ever knowing anything about it. Never read it, never thought about it, never touched it. And eventually, I found a version of it by Mullah Muhammad Hujayrat, who I'm sure most of you know, who reads it in a blistering 23 minutes, something like that. Very nice. Put it on my phone and I started listening to it. When I started listening to it, I was mesmerized. It's amazing. Really, really, it's amazing. And the personal piece of advice I would give to all of you is not to recite it like a ziyara. When you go home, open Mufatih al-Janan. Open it, I think it's page 623, Mufatih al-Janan, something like that, in the standard print of Mufatih al-Janan. Read a ziyara jam al kabira And don't read it like a ziyara. You don't have to do wudu and do ghusl ziyara and stand. Forget that. Just look at the ziyara, open the pages in front of you, and just read the words. Just read them and think about what they mean. Because I think, and this is personal opinion, we're living at a time of great... There's a lack of clarity about what the imams are, who the imams are, what the Ahlul Bayt represent to us. We think they're just kind of great servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But actually what we need is the Ahlul Bayt to tell us on their terms what to think of them. And I'll read you a few extracts from the ziyarah and I'll conclude. For example, Salamu alaykum ya Ahl Bayt al nubuwa is the first line. Wa mawda' al-rasala wa mukhtalif al-mala'ika wa mahbita al wahi etc etc and it continues let's just take that one example in Arabic if I want to know where to mine gold gold usually you mine it from the ground means the source of gold and this particular phrase and Imam al-Hadi calls them remember this is a ziyara to the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt so in the same way that Ma'din al dhahab is the source of gold, geographically speaking, in terms of geology, from a religious perspective, the Imams are Ma'din al rahmah They are the source of Allah's mercy. I don't know many people who think about the Imams in that particular way. Let's continue. Wa khuzzan al-ilm. Meaning, they are the treasure troves. They are the chests. They contain the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa munta al-hilm. Wa usul al-karam. Wa qadat al-umam. The leaders of all nations. They are the ones who have authority over all the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think I could read the whole ziyarah, but I won't. Obviously, I don't have that much time. And it's not too long. But my final piece of advice would be to all of you, if you want to attain the ma'rif of the Ahlul Bayt, which I think we are all required to do in this particular phase of time. The key way in which we can do that is to read a ziyarah al-jama' al-kabira. And inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can all begin to read that ziyarah. And truly think of the Ahlul Bayt on their terms, not on our terms. وأقول قولي هذا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الأطيبين الأطهرين. صل على محمد وآل محمد. We thank Brother Muhammad Adam Ali for that short lecture. And inshallah, you have benefited from that and the advice that inshallah that we have been given by the Brother Muhammad Adam Ali is to try and read Ziyarat Jama'a tonight, inshallah. And as he mentioned, if you search for the recitation by Muhammad al Hujayrat, it's only 23 minutes. Or you can try and recite it yourself, inshallah. Our next participant is his sort of first time doing this in front of an audience but I'm sure he gets a lot of training at home he probably listens to his brother's voice screaming probably not anymore because he's married but before so inshallah we'll try and encourage him and support him inshallah and if I could ask you if you want to speak or have a chat with the person then you can Make your way outside, finish your conversation, and then inshallah you can join us for the program. We welcome the young Mahdi Fadil with a loud salawat.
Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to con congratulate you on this blessed day, the birth of Imam Mahdi. Please listen and reply and I will be at your service. Your return we'll see, Ya Imam Mahdi, your return we'll see, Ya Imam Mahdi, Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih, Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih, Your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi, your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi, Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih, Fasallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa One more time. Your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi, Your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi, Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih, Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. With the sword of your father and the heart of your mother, we patiently await your returning day. Your mother is a Hawra and your father is Haider, and the Bay I am Mahdi in your hands. A heart, do you see? Ya Imam Mahdi, a heart, do you see? Ya Imam Mahdi, Fasallahu alayhi wa ala alay. Fasallahu alayhi wa ala alay. Your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi. Your return we see, Ya Imam Mahdi. Fasallahu alayhi wa ala alay. Fasallahu alayhi. With the sword of your father and the heart of your mother, we patiently await your returning day. Your mother is a Hawra and your father is Haider, and a Bay'a Mahdi in your hands lay. You are pure, you are Kawthar, son of Ali Abdullah. A heart's long for you to show us the true way. Our longing becomes greater, but we will give up never. Your side we will never leave, but always stay. Your side we will leave. Ya Imam Mahdi, ya Hos, do you see? Ya Imam Mahdi, fa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. Fa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. You are pure, you are kawthar, son of Ali Abdullah. A heart's long for you to show us the true way. Our longing becomes greater, but we will give up never. A heart's long. Our longing becomes greater, but we will give up never. Your side, we will never leave, but always stay. A heart, do you see? Ya Imam Mahdi. A heart, do you see? Ya Imam. Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alih. With the guidance of your Lord, our victory is assured. You are the truth that our heart will never leave. You are our greatest reward. Your light we have not ignored. From our birth to our death in you we believe. With you we are free, Ya Imam Mahdi. With you we are free, Ya Imam Mahdi. Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alim. Fasallallahu alayhi wa ala alim. Like Haidar the lion roar, we have your shield and your sword. And by this life we will never be deceived. May I... May I 
Yeah, blood for you be poured. This love who else can afford? Mehdi, in your absence, who else can we grieve? With you we are free. Ya Imam Mehdi, with you we are free. Ya Imam Mehdi, fa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi. Fa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi. Fa sallallahu alayhi. My life's My life's a gift for you. Oh, Mehdi, we need you. My life's a gift for you. Oh, Mehdi, we need you. We need you, Savior. Oh, we need you, Savior. 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 We need you, قامت الدنيا تنور لنا أفراح وسرور قامت الدنيا تنور بنور مهدينا 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 We need you now today to show us the right way we need you now today to show us the right way. We need you, Savior. 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 We need